Hi, everyone. Well, they mentioned chef. I hope I'm not making you hungry right now because it's been like uh, more than an hour. So let me start by asking you a question, and you raise your hand, and it's regarding a statement which has been going on for, I would say, generations. And if you agree, please raise your hand. Do you agree to the statement that a way to a human's heart is through the stomach? Wow, okay. This is an expectedly positive response. But what if I tell you we have been wrong all along? Oops. I'm a chef working for 20 years now in the industry, and half of those years I have spent here in the Middle East, particularly in the United Arab Emirates. So I'm like sometimes feeling like I was born here in the UAE. And Dubai for chefs, especially, is both a big bonus, it's a haven for us, and also it's a big challenge. And you know why? Because Dubai is such a melting pot of different culture, different food, cuisines. Like, come on, when you go out in Dubai, when you go to a mall or any public place, what do you see? On the left-hand side, you have a Karak Chai stand waiting for you. Right behind me, maybe somebody, a Filipino guy selling me some kind of uh, delicacy from home. Or on the other hand, you have Ahmad selling you kunafa or maybe shawarma, right? And right in front of you, you have a famous hamburger chain just right in front of you. But have you ever thought for once when you get out of the restaurant, who cooked my food? Oh, interesting. Well, it could be this little guy. Well, that could be me many years back trying to make my first pizza. But to be honest, I could have been the person making your biryani or maybe making your favorite dish. Interesting. Now, the thing about food is that it is so powerful that it's, it's not just the food itself that actually crawls up into your heart and make you melt. Now, can anyone guess what this food is? If you do know this food, can you raise your hands again? I'd like to see who knows this food. Oh, wow, I'm so impressed. A lot of you did. Raise your hand. Okay. This dish is so famous in the Arabian Peninsula. It's called balalit. It's basically a breakfast staple. It's made with vermicelli rice and it's cooked with cardamom, you have saffron, that's why it's yellowish, a little bit of butter, and also some sugar, so it's a bit sweet. And on top of it, to make it more interesting, there is omelette. So, it's quite an interesting dish, and I fell in love with this dish. And do you think this dish looks familiar again? This dish is actually a version of the first dish that you saw. But how did I ever even come to think of creating something that's so different that not many of you even know about? And this dish I created in Lebanon for a project. And so I, when I arrived in Rafik Hariri Airport, so the immigration guy was, what are you doing here in Lebanon? And to his shock and, of course, my amusement, I told him I'm going to teach Lebanese cuisine. You're yeah, right. Me doing Lebanese cuisine, it's like asking a Japanese guy making your biryani, right? So the thing is, the point here is, how could someone like me go that far who lived so many kilometers away from the Middle East, and yet, I was able to travel that far and cross the bridge and make people happy apart from my own people. Very interesting. That's why food is just never the element. And there is one main ingredient in this formula 
to make you successful in warming up someone else's heart. It is very personal because food is personal. Now, let me tell you a story before I go to, to unlock the mystery behind this word, this formula. Many years ago, there was a Kuwaiti businessman who contacted me on LinkedIn. He must have been stalking me on LinkedIn for, for ages, you, don't, you never know. And of course, he asked for my CV and he must have been impressed with my background. I have traveled the world. Um, I took a lot of lessons to be better at my career. And also, I showed him photos of my work, and he was, he must have been impressed. I have worked in hotels for like 10 years. So I invited him over to my place. I said, okay, let's do a food trial. And I prepared a dish that I have always been preparing for my guests in the hotel. And, you know, it's a safe dish, but at the same time, it's a wow dish. Everyone always raves about it. So I was so excited. I was like, yeah, please, come over. I gave him water, prepared everything, and then I put the dish on the table. And I was like, I'm gonna nail this. But you know what happened? I was heartbroken. He told me, what is this? Imagine you getting a slap on your face for something that you've been doing for many years. It's not easy to digest. And at that moment, I told myself, no, well, you, got, you are kidding yourself. Just get out of there. So I said, you know what? I think this will be the last meeting with this Kuwaiti businessman. However, back in my bed, I couldn't sleep because I am a person who never takes no for an answer. If I find something or a question that always rings in my head, I couldn't sleep until I get the answer. So I told myself, what? could be the way to be able to be on his side. He's not my enemy. I don't have to dislike him. Maybe there's something wrong with my perspective in life. So I said, let me invite him again. And so I did. And you know what? The rest was history. Two and a half years since, he's been doing really, really well in his business. And I've been very, very happy. And we're now actually very close friends. Because there is one thing that you need to know to be able to cross the bridge and get there successfully. And this is heritage. Quite a simple world. We always take it for granted. But it's so, so real. You know what you do when you are sad, when you are missing home, when you are hungry? And for some reason, you've been studying a lot, and you said, you know what, I'm so tired uh, memorizing the, the book, and I just need to get out of it. You get your phone, open Deliveroo, or maybe Talabat, and then you swipe. I said, oh, maybe this hamburger will feed my need for happiness. Because heritage, my friends, is a comfort zone. Heritage is about nostalgia. You know, you, do you remember when you are so eager to go home after spending a year studying or a year working in another country, what do you always ask for? You want to ask for the food back home, home cooking. There's nothing like it. You would say, oh, I want my nana to make me my favorite dish. I want my mom to make me my favorite dish. Because this food has been part of you ever since. It's your heritage. That's why it brings you childhood memories. It releases those happy chemicals in your head. And this is how heritage looks like. They come in many forms, right? And heritage, me as a chef, brings about the ability for you to innovate things, to go beyond what you ordinarily see around. And so let's take this dish for example. This dish, I created this for a competition in France. And there were a lot of entries, but they picked this dish because, you know what? It was actually just like this. But then I made it into something special. This dish is just a porridge with chocolate. And then I made it into something else. 
And that's innovation. And again, if you embrace heritage, everyone's heritage for that matter, you are empowered to create because you understand the different things inside one's culture. So what do you think happened to my Kuwaiti businessman friends? I was able to cross to his border. I was able to appreciate the value or the importance of saffron, of cardamom, rose water. We don't have that in my heritage. Absolutely not. But then I embraced it. I said, why do I say no to something that is so unfamiliar when I can appreciate it? Much like how you appreciate people. That's why food is not just about the food itself. It's all about us. It's all about the meaning of relationship, of culture, of differences, embracing it. These are other examples of dishes that I innovated. The green one is actually made with puff rice, with coconuts. And the one on the other end is rusbil halib. So it's an Arabic uh, rice pudding. But then it comes in a different form. And the other one below, the purple color is, is a purple yam or ube, and I made it into chocolate. So again, you don't have to enjoy food the way it is. You can innovate, because now you understand what other cultures enjoy, and then it empowers you. Now, before I go on to the next image, let me tell you also one journey that I have had, which just made me feel really, really successful about embracing heritage. And that is when I invited one Emirati client for a tasting, when I was doing a project for them. And he sat and I gave him a dish. And you know what made me really emotional about it? Was when he said, Chef, this dish made me remember a memory with my dad walking down the street in Dubai. How on earth could somebody like me from a distant world even know what he was doing many years back with his dad? That is how you unlock this bridge. You can cross by embracing heritage. And that's how strong food is in connecting us all. This dish was again created in Kuwait. It's a donut, but in a different form. It's a donut tower. It has an ice cream on top, black in color. And of course, probably when somebody eats it, he says, or sees it, he will say, it's just a donut, chef. Why, why do I care? But then when they take a bite, it has flavors of baklava, a little bit of saffron, maybe a little bit of other chocolate flavors. So again, it brings you back to a memory where it's so familiar, and yet it's different. And again, when you eat something so familiar, it brings you back to your childhood. It makes you remember of happiness, happy days, right? And we all have different heritage. That's why we have to cross that line. And any one of you who wants to be a chef at some point, and there's no age limit, by the way, being a chef, just embrace it, embrace the unknown, Embrace the fact that we are all different. Embrace the fact that you can do it, that you can cross the line, because you have the power to do so if you open your mind. Does this look familiar to you? It may not be the same as what you always probably see around, but it has elements that probably remind you of kunafa, right? The orange thing just nails it. Like, yeah, I know what it is. Then there's some rose, dried rose petals. It's kunafa. But I made it into an ice cream as well, and below it is muhalabiya. Then I dipped in milk chocolate. And of course, it comes with, with a syrup that has lemon, a bit of orange blossom, and rose water. So again, you go there, you sit, and you say, can I order a kunafa, your version? And they get it, and they say, oh wow, I've never expected this, and I eat it, and I say, you know what? This is something unique. It's in my culture, but then it's presented in a different way. And who made this dish? And then I go out and said, oh, okay. So this guy made it. And it's like, were you born here? And I said, no, obviously not. But I know your heritage, and 
I love your heritage as much as I love mine because I love the differences that we have. Right? Now, there is also one dish that I have created since two and a half years ago, and this is a true testament to the fact that embracing heritage just makes you more successful in innovating dishes, in innovating something that is out of your world. And this dish has made this businessman so successful, he opened already six branches in the Middle East. And you know what? If you look for the hashtag Baby Dynamite on Instagram or maybe on the social media, you will find out a lot of people have attempted to copy the next dish that I'm going to show you. And that's why I feel like sharing this because this is a true testament. This is not just something that I've created out of nowhere. There is a reason behind it. And it became the 10 must-try dishes here in Dubai after they opened in three months because it's been copied multiple times, not just in the Middle East, but even outside. And what's unique about it? Well, I guess you have to try it to know. And I wouldn't even know that it would become so successful. All I did was just work on it, try to put my head into another person's culture, try to understand what they were doing that was not in my heritage to be able to successfully penetrate that culture because food, again, is a strong bond between our feelings and the need to be satisfied with something. Okay? And if there is something that I'd like you to take away today, for you to succeed in getting someone else's heart, getting someone to say yes to you, the next time you cook a dish for someone, put a piece of his or her heritage on that dish. And my friends, trust me, you will be glad you did. Thank you.